Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make a bracelet and we're gonna use this, well, I'm gonna use these gorgeous kind of olive green beads because I think they're really pretty for fall and into the Christmas season and even for spring. It's such a flattering color on most people. So um, it's one of my favorite to make jewelry with. I'm also using some gold accent beads and um, some bead caps. And I decided to go with copper for my bead caps. You're gonna need two bead caps for every one of your main beads here. I have eight and these are about a centimeter wide or about five sixteenths so i've got a little a little measuring tape here so it's about five sixteenths i don't know if you can my fingers are probably in the way i couldn't find a caliper so i could tell you exactly in millimeters but it's about a centimeter what's that 10 millimeters i don't know i don't know my metric but i just wanted to show you that i get some bicones that are about half a centimeter um, from end to end and the way i figure out my bracelet size is i just um, measure around my wrist loosely not really that loosely i want to i want to just kind of get an idea mine's uh my wrist is a little smaller than six inches and so i want at least six inches of beads here and i just kind of measure right down the center of them and uh starting at the zero point on my measuring tape so i got six inches there and i know i'll have a little extra room when i put my toggle clasp on so um so that will give me plenty and that's you'll need a clasp any kind you like i like toggles um because i find them easier to put on and off and you'll need wire and i'm using a seven strand bead along wire that's copper and also copper crimp beads and it will tell you on your beading wire what size crimp bead to use so that's helpful information if you don't have anything and you're going to the store you know you could start picking up your things walking around to the other supplies and making sure you have stuff that's going to work together i'm going to zoom in and move my board a little bit so you'll be able to see what i'm doing a little bit better and I'm gonna sh actually I'll show you how I store my beads um, I really love these just I try to keep them all by color in trays that have uh, snap down lids because it's just easy for me to uh, to find them that way the ones the particular ones that I use unfortunately are really hard to find nowadays um, and you can really get by with just a pair of three-in-one pliers but if you have them I recommend also having flush cutters because it's easier to trim that wire absolutely short and a pair of crimp pliers if you have them but if you don't there's a flat part on your three-in-one pliers you can smush your crimp beads with it's not as secure of a bond but um it'll do in a pinch and i know how, how expensive it can be to get into jewelry making so um just get a good pair of these to begin with they're not crazy expensive i got these for like four bucks at walmart and they're fantastic so i just wanted to kind of help you out with that so i'm going to start off by getting um probably eight to ten inches of my beading wire and I'm just cutting it off with my flush cutters and I'm going to start by attaching a clasp to one end and I'm actually going to put my collar back on this wire so it doesn't completely unravel on me you know what I'm going to do that I'll do that off camera because I don't want to waste your time okay so to put the toggle on what you're going to do is first put on a crimp bead they come in these cute little vials I would save the vials if I were you so you can have um, you can do something else with them. So I'm going to put on my crimp bead. Try to keep it in frame while I do it. It's awfully tricky when you, that's why I don't do jewelry tutorials very often. It's hard to make sure I have everything in frame. And then I'm going to put on my end, my, uh, my clasp, and then I'm going to feed the end of that wire. I just want to, hopefully you can see it through the crimp bead again. And then I'm going to use my crimp pliers to uh, to tighten it up. Let me slide that bead right up there. Okay. You don't want it super tight because then you can weaken that joint. All right. So you want to make sure your wires are not crossed. It can be kind of tricky. You want to cross though. They like to cross. They're naughty wires. There we go. They're uncrossed. <laughs> uncrossed wires. Okay. And then you want to take your pliers and in the first channel, you're just gonna smush and it's just gonna change your bead from a circle to a flattened circle or kind of like an oval then you put it in the next channel over and you squish and that's going to um, divide your wires so you've got one wire in one half of your bead and one wire in the other and then you turn it on its edge okay I, this is I wish I had a better way to, to shoot this and then you put it back in that first channel and then you squish well it wants to it just slipped out of place for me then you squish it and it folds it over on itself okay so you end up with a nice little bead and then i like to give it a pull make sure it's on there really good which it is and then you trim off your wire sometimes i feed this down through a couple uh, beads but a lot of times more often than not it comes loose and it pokes me and i don't like that so i'm just going to trim it 
Okay, so now we're gonna look at our beadboard and I've put everything out and I've measured it to make sure it will fit. And um, I just kind of fished around and find, found a couple beads that matched for the end. And I'm gonna start stringing. So I put on um, just a little bicone, green bicone at the end. It doesn't really matter what you use for that. I just wanted to make sure I had plenty of rum. And then I've got a golden bicone, kind of like an amber color. And then I'm going to put beads, but I'm going to add these bead caps to them. So on my bead, your bead cap just covers over it like that. It's so pretty. It's such a nice way to decorate like a, a bead, to highlight a bead, to make it look a little extra fancy. And um, it's really pretty for earrings too, like a simple pair of earrings. Adding a bead cap does so much. Now look how much fancier that bead is. It looks like something a princess would wear, don't you think? There, so there, so that's how that looks. So you're gonna continue on stringing your beads. Each one of the your faceted, and I like the faceted beads because they have such a beautiful sparkle. I think I got these at Fire Mountain Gems. They all the time, they have, and I'll, let me warn you before you go, I'm not sponsored by Fire Mountain Gems or anything, but I'm gonna warn you because it's very tempting to order hundreds of dollars worth of beads because the more you order, the cheaper your per price thing gets. And they have these dollar sales where like, they have, I think these green beads I got on the dollar, got, they were strands, they were a dollar. And, um, and those, I mean, those are as cheap as they're gonna get, but once you get over 50 items in your basket, everything else gets cheaper, the things that aren't the super duper sale things. I just love the way that looks. Um, so I just want to warn you because it's very easy to like, oh, look at that. I put three more things and my whole basket price is less. And it's, I just want to warn you, it's very addictive to shop there. The stuff is wonderful, but um, yeah, very, very addicting. But if you're going to get into, into, into jewelry, I do recommend it over going to like a Joann's or an AC Moore, even though I do love those stores as well, because you're going to pay so much less. And the quality I find is much better at Fire Mountain Gems. I feel like Joann's and AC Moore has like second sometimes and the quality is just a lot better when you order online from a, a jewelry supplier so and and of course the prices are cheaper I think it gets pretty darn close to wholesale I know several jewelry stores that actually order from Fire Mountain Gems you know and they wait till they have a huge order to do so they save quite a bit of money so I'm gonna continue on beating like this and uh, I guess we could chat we'll chat until we'll get we'll do the the uh, center part together um, but I did a big order I usually wait until I have sold a lot of jewelry before I restock, and then um, like the last time I did it was be it was after a craft fair. I had sold a lot of jewelry. I needed to restock, and um, and I'm still working on that that order. I've filled up pretty much all of my containers, and I need to make a lot more jewelry before I before I buy any more. But um, just just beautiful stuff. So I'm trying to decide whether I want to leave this center bead um, dressed or undressed. So let's try it just on its own. I'm going to see how that looks. See, I kind of like that one without a bead cap because then it makes the other ones look a little more special. But I'm also going to try it with the bead cap just to see. The, oh, the bead caps I actually got at AC Moore. They were the Blue Moon, Blue Moon, Blue Moon beads, bead caps. I was hoping I had a filigree from Butterbee Scraps leftover that was going to be that, that was going to work for that, but I didn't. Um, but I got, I did get the bead caps. I find that bead caps and findings and stuff are a better deal at like, um, at the big craft store. I think I like it better without. To me, it kind of looks like jewelry, um, dollhouse furniture, that big bead with a bead cap on it. So I'm going to go without on that one. Um, but so yeah, I get my, like my head pins and stuff like that. I usually just get those at the craft store because I run out of those a lot. And, um, I don't find a big quality difference with the findings. I do with beads, but not with the findings. So just continue on just like we did on this side of the bead, the bracelet for that side. And we'll join back up to do the final clasp. Okay, so the bracelet is all strung. See, that was really easy, but it's so pretty because of all those bead caps and the faceted beads. I just think that's a great way to uh, to get a lot of bang for your buck, the faceted beads and the bead caps. Neither are, are that expensive. Um, and now I'm gonna add the other clasp. So what I'm gonna do first is grab that little crimp bead, the tiny little minuscule thing, which I'm trying not to drop, <laughs> and string that on. And then I am going to put my other end of my clasp. 
Now, if you put this around your wrist and you said, geez, it's just not quite long enough, you could do a couple seed beads here. You could put a, um, you could do a couple jump rings. Let me just show you here. I got one. Well, I got one right here. You could put a couple uh, jump rings on there to extend it without making it look awkward. So that's something to do in case you miscalculate. Um, it's good to know those little tricks. If it's a little too long, you could always snag off um, that little green bead there. You know, just, uh, I like to kind of plan a little bit of a wiggle room, um, but I didn't find the bead caps added too much length, luckily, to my bracelet. I always have a hard time um, because my wrists are quite small, so a lot of bracelets are a little big on me, but I also realized that if I'm designing, I need to make them a little bigger if I intend to sell them because um, I have kind of like a freakishly child-sized wrist. So there's something you want to keep in mind, too, if you're designing for other people, if you're uh, whatever size your wrists are might not be the size wrists that your customers are. You might want to have a couple of varieties there. Honestly, I have to say, I don't find bracelets to sell all that well, um, but I did reduce all my inventory. A couple months ago, I did a big uh, grab bag sale, so I would have um, more room for more inventory in my shop. Um, but it's always been earrings have always been the best sellers for me. I've never been able to really uh, do that well with bracelets or necklaces. I think it's because earrings are such an inexpensive item that people can kind of buy them without worrying. So I've done this the same way as I did on the other side. I'm going to have to get that a little bit tighter. Doesn't want to pull through on me. Here we go. Again, you want enough room in there so that you're not, it's not going to make your clasp tight. Okay, because you don't want that extra wear and tear on your clasp. Um, or you don't want the extra wear and tear on that wire, I should say, in your clasp. And then you're gonna spread the wires across so they don't so they don't cross, okay? And then again, you're gonna use your crimp pliers. And if you don't have crimp pliers, just squash them with the flat part of your three-in-one tool, but you will get a better connection with your crimp pliers. So I'm squashing it so that the bead becomes from a circle to an oval. Then I am turning it and going in the next channel. It looks kind of like a heart if you close it. And I'm gonna give it another squish. In channel number two, like a heart. And then I'm gonna go back to the first one and squash it down small. It just kind of folds that little thing together. So, I mean, theoretically, if, if something happens in your bead breaks, I think I've got that good, but I'm just gonna give it another little. Theoretically, if something happens in your, your bead breaks that hopefully just one, one wire would come free and you'd still be able to save it before all your beads spilled. Now I'm going to trim that with my flush cutters, and again, you can use your three-in-one tool, but you'll get a little bit closer with a with like a diagonal plier or a flush cutter. I'm just going to snip that off nice and short, and voila, we have a beautiful bracelet. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I had a great time doing some jewelry with you. I've been wanting to do some jewelry for a while, so um, I was really excited to uh, to do this today. I always kind of get myself in trouble at the end when I go to try and put my bracelet on, then I become like a complete clod, and I can't I can't get, I can't get the stick to go through the hole. You know, oh look, I can actually do it today. Look at that. No, well, I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. For goodness sake, I'm here pushing this against my stomach, trying to get this, hold it still so I can pull the toggle through. Why did I, why did I even attempt it? Why do I jinx myself so? Ah, there we go. Look at that. It works. I'm not faking. I really like this. I like this chunky jewelry. Um, has good movements, not too big, it's not going to fall off, not too tight. I can sell it. It's it's big enough that it would fit a normal person's wrist, but still not too big that it falls off on me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any requests for any other jewelry tutorials, I'd like to do more of them. Just let me know in the comments below. Please share this with any of your friends that would like to make a pretty bracelet. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting.